What's good people, it's your boy Lester React and welcome back to the channel. You guys, I appreciate you guys for stopping by once again for rocking with your boy, man. And what we got today? The most horrible parasite brain eating Ombia. But before we jump into this video, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. You'll be doing me a favor and at the same time you'll be helping me out. So you got me. A war has been going on for billions of years that breeds well-armed monsters who struggle with other monsters for survival. Yeah. Having no particular interest in us, most of them are relatively harmless, as our immune systems deal with their weapons easily. Yeah, no. But there are exceptions. Nagleria fowleri is an amoeba that has not only developed a deadly taste for human brains, but is also a match for our defenses and stars in dramatic headlines. What happens when this monster enters your body? For real? What happened? That's what we're here for. We want to know what happened. Nagleria fowleri is an amoeba, a microbe with a nucleus, one of the smallest life forms on Earth. It is a voracious hunter of bacteria and other critters that it devours whole and rips into pieces. Savage, like many man. amoebae, it is able to transform into different stages that help it survive. But most of the time, Nagleria fowleri is in its trophozoite stage, during which it looks like a squishy blob with tiny arms, and hunts, divides, and thrives. Its natural home. Hey, let me go ahead and stop it right quick. I know it's already early, right? But man, that's a savage, what? It hunts, and divides, and it mutates. Man, it's a lot of things that we don't really know what's going on out here, man, you know, and every day we're learning, you know what I'm saying? And that's one thing, you know, that I look forward to, you know, like, always trying to learn something, and this really caught my attention. That's why I'm doing this reaction, man. But enough of me talking. Home is in fresh water, ponds, rivers, lakes, and hot springs. But, unfortunately, it also feels happy in pipes, swimming pools, fountains, or spas when they're not properly treated. The warmer the water, the more it thrives and multiplies. So in the summer, when humans seek to cool off and enjoy themselves, the chances are highest that both species will interact. Because this makes it hard to avoid, millions of people regularly have contact with the amoeba, especially in warmer climates, and many people even seem to have antibodies against it. And this is mostly okay. You can even swallow it without consequences. That's a good thing. Things turn bad when people dive or swim in water contaminated with the amoeba, and water splashes high up into their noses. In a single drop of lake water, there are millions of viruses, bacteria, and amoebae, and that isn't really a big deal. Hey, man. On our end, over here in Florida, man, it's about to be summer. But in Florida, it's always summer, everyday summer. You know what I'm saying? But, man... Man, this is something that I never actually really knew what that exists, man. And um, that's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. So now it, it kind of like messing with me, man. So now, you know, summertime for us, man, we like to be in the water, man. Man, but that that, that that's something that, you know, like people got to take into consideration, man. Especially, you know, like in, the, you know, in the southern states like, you know, Florida and, and all. It's crazy, man. I don't know, man. It's messing with me already. But Nagleria fowleri is different. Let's zoom into the nose of an unsuspecting victim enjoying a great summer day and see what happens. First of all, the amoeba doesn't really want to be inside your nose, as it's not really looking for trouble. It just wants to eat a few bacteria. Instead, it's greeted by your natural defenses. Unfortunately for humans, Nagleria fowleri happens to be exceptionally good at generally flying under the radar of your immune system. For example, the inside of your nose is covered by mucosa, a slime filled with chemicals that kill or stun possible invaders or alert immune cells. Say it together, guys. Mucosa. In other words, mucus, I believe. But Nagleria fowleri is not particularly bothered by them and instead calmly checks out the scenery, mildly annoyed about the whole ordeal. Now, if you are unlucky, the tiny critter stumbles over something that actually sparks its interest. Nerve cells. Your nose is filled with a large network of olfactory nerve cells that pick up molecules from the outside and transmit their information to your olfactory bulb, the center of smell in your brain. To do their job, these cells talk to each other by releasing various messenger chemicals and recognizing them via specific receptors. 
One of the most important of these chemicals is acetylcholine. Through sheer evolutionary bad luck, Nagleria fowleri happens to have receptors that recognize acetylcholine. And it seems to attract them irresistibly, a little like moths that are attracted by light. So as your olfactory nerve cells do their job, using plenty of acetylcholine to talk to the brain, Nagleria fowleri enters your tissue. It seems to follow the chemical signals upstream. Neutrophils, crazy suicide warriors, begin to attack the amoebae. Man, those things some warriors for real, man. They gotta go through all that and they still sometimes not even get detected. They can be able to fly under the radar. That's crazy, man. Oh, man. But at the same time, this also, you know, let me go ahead and, you know, put it out there. This is also a great, you know, indicator that, you know, the human anatomy, you know, was created by the one and only true God. To allow our cells and all that, you know, to do what it do. And you got this, this, what is, let's say they got the ambia. I can't even pronounce it, man. But golly, man, this thing is a straight savage beast. Man, hey, it's crazy though. Individually, they have no chance against them, as the invaders are large and pretty buff fighters used to dealing with tough enemies. So the defenders swarm the intruders and kill them either by vomiting chemicals that punch holes into them or by literally ripping parts of them off and devouring them. But the Nagleria fowlery train is still on track and while the neutrophil attacks slow them down, they continue to follow the olfactory nerves to their final destination, your brain. This process can take between one and nine days and you'll probably not notice anything during that time until the amoebae reach the olfactory bulb, the center of smell and entrance to your brain. Your brain cells are nothing more than helpless victims and they all release that wonderful acetylcholine. Nagleria fowlery initiates a massacre and releases an onslaught of various attack molecules. Some of them are basically little bombs that rip holes into your cells on contact so their pieces can be eagerly consumed. But Nagleria fowlery is now multiplying and it's also becoming really creepy. In a feeding frenzy, it can develop up to a dozen suckers called food cups that look like giant eerie mouths. The amoebae engage your brain cells, suck them in and rip large bites out of them while they're still alive. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you guys just hear what I just heard, man? Nope. The thing that it says within one to nine days, they can enter your brains, right? Then they go in there like Navy SEALs and all that, you know, and go in there and start shooting up cells and all that, you know, then they mutate and they send out these things, man. That's crazy. That's mind boggling, man. Bruh. That's crazy. Wow. Golly, man. But you know what they say? What you don't know can't hurt you, man. Because, man, for knowing the fact that, you know, somebody may have this lurking in their brain, man, and knowing it could do, it could rain havoc on you like that. That's crazy, man. Man. Now things escalate quickly and the disease that will kill you sets in. Alerted by the massacre, millions of immune cells, neutrophils, eosinophils and microglias invade the infected tissue. Which is a problem. Your immune system is dangerous and not exactly a careful fighter. It's like burning down a forest to kill the wolves inside it. A really bad idea in the brain. They waste no time and attack the amoeba, using all the weapons available to them, from chemicals to trying to eat them alive. Neutrophils explode themselves to erect barriers spiked with deadly chemicals. A fierce battle ensues. Nagleria fowlery can actually fight back, itself attacking and killing many immune cells. The immune system now throws everything it has at the invader, but in vain. The complement system, tiny protein bombs that can kill intruders on their own, are easily disabled. Antibodies, usually one of your super weapons, are just destroyed or swallowed. A high fever that usually slows enemies down does nothing as the amoeba actually thrives in the heat. All the while, the amoebae continue to multiply, fight and devour your brain cells. A disastrous chain reaction is taking place. One major thing your immune cells do when they fight is to cause inflammation, which directs large amounts of fluid from your bloodstream into the site of an infection. So as the battle rages on without a clear winner, more and more fluid enters the brain. 
At this point, the human will feel symptoms that quickly escalate. It all begins pretty vaguely, a headache, fever, nausea, and vomiting. As hey, let's be real. Is somebody complaining about headache, fever, nausea, vomiting? First thing that's going to come to mind is Corona. <laughs> hey, but for real though, man, this thing is a, it's a straight savage, man. Man, this, this little sucker boy, man. This thing here, boy, that's a real warrior right there, boy. Damn it, man. Man, let me know let me know what you guys think, man. You know, have you guys ever heard anything like this, man? Is this something that, you know, if you know anybody that experienced this, man, but this something that, man, you know, I don't like to, you know, mention the word fear, but boy, I know it'll strike a lot of fear in a lot of people, man, but man, that's crazy, man. As the battle spreads rapidly through the brain, serious symptoms appear from confusion inability to concentrate, to fatigue, seizures, and hallucinations. The brain swells up massively, but can't expand due to the bones surrounding it. So it compresses and disables the brainstem that controls things like breathing. Usually within a week, the patient dies. Up to 97% of the patients infected by the amoeba share this fate. In almost all cases, by the time an infection by Nagleria fowleri is recognized, the disastrous battle for the brain is already so far along that there is almost nothing to be done. Wow, not crazy. only do we currently not have effective treatments, there are also an abundance of open questions about how an amoeba that usually enjoys its life in open water is able to overcome our immune system so effectively. So how worried do you need to be about this horrifying killer amoeba? Well, not very. While the Nagleria fowleri is clearly extremely deadly, and the infection truly horrible, there have only been a few hundred cases in the last few decades. You are way more likely to drown in a pool than to get infected. Not only does the amoeba need to be flushed high up your nose, it also needs to get a good grip, and it also has to make its way through the first lines of your defenses. Ultimately, Nagleria fowleri is neither evil nor a huge public health risk but every year, some unlucky people have to deal with it. We still have so much to learn about it, and until we find a way to treat it, Nagleria fowleri will continue to be this vague and horrifying thing, hunting in puddles and lakes, and sometimes pools. Usually for bacteria, and very occasionally for people. Oh, hey. Well, guys, at the ending of the video, you know, they done turned off the light on us. But guys, let me know what y'all think about this video, man. It was very, you know, interesting, man. You know what I'm saying? I learned something. But come to find out that they're not really that dangerous as we might think they are. You know what I'm saying? Or what they're supposed to be. But, um, man. But those little suckers, they can be dangerous. You know, they could be, when they do get a grip of you, man, they're like they're trying to take your head off. But, um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys liked this video. If y'all liked it, let me know. Give it a like. You know, you'll be helping me out. And, um. Once again, you know, if you haven't subscribed, man, and catch you on the next one. I hope you have a blessed one. All right? No life, no Christ. All right? Bow.